Alright, so before the video starts, I would like to apologize for not uploading since last year. Alright, jokes aside, though, Happy New Year anyway. Enjoy the maths explanation with random stock music in the background. Which is larger, 100 to the 99 or 99 to the 100? The answer is 99 to the 100. I've given you an answer, but this is likely not what you came here for. First of all, it would help to have a reason of working out. After all, in a test, you'd lose like 99% of your marks for not showing one. One of my favorite methods of showing that 99 to the 100 is indeed greater than 100 to the 99 is through a simple ratio. A ratio is perfect for this, as our goal is to show which one is larger in proportion to the other. Let's divide 100 to the 99 by 99 to the 100, and if this value is larger than 1, it means 100 to the 99 is greater, while if it's less than 1, 99 to the 100 is greater. Of course, it could also equal 1, meaning they're exactly the same. This new way of thinking is appealing, though how do we continue? I mean, it only feels like we've created more questions, doesn't it? The first thing we could do is to rewrite the ratio with equal powers on both the numerator and the denominator. We can accomplish this by rewriting the extra 99 and separating it. We can simplify this to the 99 and move the power outside. The ratio turns into a much easier to manage expression. 100 divided by 99 raised to the power of 99. For now we can neglect this 1 over 99 and just focus on this interesting new ratio. It may be hard to see, but this value is actually something we have clearly defined in mathematics. It's a famous approximation for everyone's favorite constant, Euler's number. If you're not used to what Euler's number is, I made a video on it. Essentially, just a constant that keeps showing up all over mathematics, in every field from calculus to finance all the way to statistics. Of course, this number is irrational, and this is a ratio, so this remains an approximation. A very precise one at that, but still an approximation. Nonetheless, we can replace this with E to denote Euler's number. Though keep in mind that this is no longer exact, but close enough for it to not matter. In the end, all this is is just E divided by 99, which is around 0.027. Obviously less than 1. In the end, we can deduce that 99 to the 100 is indeed the greater value. Though in the nature of classic mathematicians, let's try generalizing it. Mathematicians love generalizing, it's all they talk about. You got a series, then generalize its convergence. You got factorials, then how about decimals? You got something you can't generalize? then we have something that can generalize what can't be generalized. This is why we need to find a formula, or at least a method, that can determine at a glance which one is greater. Let's take a number. For our sake of demonstration, we will use 10. 10 can be split into two equal parts of 5. But instead of adding the two 5s, let's multiply them. This equals 25 or as we should say, 5 to the power of 2. We can split this even further, into 3, 4, and let's stop at 5 parts. Hmm, the value peaked at 4 splits, or 2.5 to the power of 4, after which it started to decline. This is also the base closest to Euler's number, you know, 2.718, Coincidence? I think not. The closer the base is to Euler's number, the larger the value gets, resulting in the largest possible split of 10, to be e to the e divided by 10, which is around 
Keep in mind that the index multiplied by the base has to equal the original number, in this case being 10. You can try this with every single number, 20, 30, 100 even. But Euler's number will still be the best possible base every single time. As of now, however, this seems like black magic, as if Euler's number somehow needed another excuse to show up in a completely unrelated area, we have it right here. I used a specific method of proof that relies heavily on calculus, so if you don't have a basic understanding of derivatives and how to interpret critical points, just skip ahead. Alright, for those who do know some basic calculus, I won't waste your time. First, we'll turn this power thingy into a function, x to the a divided by x, where a is the original number and x is treated as variable. Just remember that the index and the base have to multiply to the original number being split, in this case a. We can then find the derivative of this function, the rate of change, with respect to x. The process of deriving is slightly complicated, though I think a chain rule and a quotient rule is the most efficient way. Afterwards, you're left with this expression. This 1 minus the natural log of e is actually just 1 minus 1, which is, of course, 0. And since the whole expression relies on it multiplicatively, the whole thing equals 0. The derivative is 0 at x equals e, meaning that it has a critical point or a global maximum located there. Anyway, with that aside, let's get on with our actual goal. How can we figure out at a glance which index is greater? We need a couple of things to be given in order to actually perform this trick though. Firstly, both of the values must have an index and an exponent that multiply to the same value. Such as the original example, they both multiply to 9900. Then we need to check which one has a base closer to Euler's number. The one that's closer is your greater value. Alright, take a deep breath, we did it. See ya!